already seen that uh, uh, in order to establish the convergency of a sequence of real numbers you need to know uh, inequalities you have to play with inequalities uh, from the perspective of epsilon n that for um, given epsilon you have to find a natural number n okay so that criteria you had already seen uh, in uh, math one or calculus or also in plus plus two you might have already seen that convergency of sequences series today we will discuss about convergency of a stochastic sequence or a, a sequence of random variables simply i would like to say that so coming to today's lecture uh, here uh, coming outline of today's lecture are the following so first i would like to uh, give idea about hopping inequality uh, it is just uh, one of the interesting uh, inequality which is introduced by Hopding uh, under a certain lemma. So we will see that uh, Hopding inequality is more suitable for learning kind of problem. And we will see that later in the estimation process, we will see more application of uh, Hopding inequality. Afterward, we will discuss about a stochastic convergence based on uh, that probabilistic inequalities. So how we can establish a stochastic, a stochastic convergence of sequence of random variables. So here, remember that we talk about convergence of sequence of random variables. So that's where a stochastic convergence would come here. After that, if time permit, we will talk about random sample or sample. That means at hand, we will have a certain observation or sample. Uh, we don't know about complete population, but we will have some idea through sample. And from that sample, we try to introduce some kind of uh, uh, interesting feature that we are calling it uh, statistic. Uh, simply, it happens to be either sample mean or sample variance or sample kind of approach. That means from sample, we try to uh, come up with one estimate of the population uh, parameter. So that I would like to say that we will introduce from the sample some kind, a special kind of uh, statistics and we will talk about uh, further analysis of those uh, statistics like sample mean, sample variance kind of things and what, what would be the distribution of those things also we will discuss in detail. Okay, so coming to first part that uh, Hopkins inequality and three important inequality we had already discussed that Marco inequality, Chebyshire inequality and uh, Chern of inequality. Those are very much fundamental. Everyone have to be very good in those three inequality because as I told that once something is fundamental, you need to explain, you need to explore everything regarding that. So that's why I had used the word fundamental, three fundamental uh, probabilistic inequality. So just uh, you have to go through in detail again. If you further face problem, let me know. I have already explained everything regarding that. So today we are going to discuss about Hopping inequalities. So it is based on a very a special kind of lemma. That means it will talk about uh, bounded random variable. That means random variable is observing value from a bounded interval. So that kind of criteria would be suitable for Hopping inequality. And we will see that it is having further uh, uh, exploration that uh, in sub Gaussian case. So what is that? First we need to discuss about what is Hopping in lemma. Okay. So Hopping lemma say that if you are having a random variable which is bounded in a given interval uh, a to b that means uh, x is observing only from a bounded interval okay not like that x is observing uh, value like uh, gaussian random variable or like uh, exponential random variable or like uh, any other uh, random variable which is taking value uh, from the infin infinite interval here x would take value from the finite interval that criteria we are putting it here so if we, we are having such kind of random variable which is bounded in nature then we can talk about uh, uh, expectation of uh, this simply we are calling it uh, what does it re represent it is talking about uh, moment genetic function so moment genetic function of not x it is moment genetic function of centered random variable so we are having a random variable x and then we deviate that random variable by corresponding expectation of that random variable so in that case we are getting a centered random variable we are calling it centered random variable why because if you are if you are willing to find mean of this one, mean would be zero. Mean of this uh, deviated random variable, it would be zero. That's why we are calling it, it is a centered random variable. So that criteria we are coming it here. Uh, okay, so there is no issue. You can also directly establish hopping lemma for a random variable itself. But here we are first, uh, uh, we are having a random variable X. From there, we define a centered random variable. And from here, we will define moment genetic function of this a center uh, you can call it uh, y y equal to x uh, minus expectation of x so we are defining moment genetic function generally it happens to be function of s and how we define we define it as expectation of exponential of 
uh, s times y. That means exp expectation of uh, exponential of s times y. So this is the moment genetic function. So Hawking inequality is talking about uh, upper bound of uh, exponential upper bound of this uh, uh, moment genetic function. So this is the exponential bound. Usually we can say that it is very much uh, uh, specific. It is just uh, related with this interval that where from where x is observing value. Okay, and uh, somehow we will see that uh, this quantity uh, b square uh, b minus uh, uh, a whole square by 8 it would be somewhat uh, related with the uh, uh, variance point kind of uh, variance kind of quantity okay so that's way uh, further uh, it will have the same uh, feature what uh, exponential random variable used to have that uh, uh, for exponent uh, for uh, normal random variable or gaussian random variable so we know that if x is a gaussian random variable so easily we can find moment genetic function for that Gaussian random variable. Suppose mean is 0 and variance is sigma. Variance is sigma. In that case, easily we can find uh, moment genetic function of this one. What was moment genetic function? So it was exponential of, it is coming, it is the power uh, sigma square s square by 2 we had already seen that so this one was the moment genetic function for gaussian random variable so you can see that it is having uh, this upper bound of this moment genetic function of centered random variable here x is bounded in nature it is having similar kind of feature what uh, almost similar kind of feature what uh, exponent uh, normal random variable is having so that's why we are coming with this kind of uh, bound it is introduced by hopping Hopping. Okay, so this that's why we are calling it Hopping lemma. Okay, let us go to talk about the Hopping inequality. What does it talk about? Suppose we are having n number of uh, independent and uh, bounded random variable, which is bounded over the given interval a to b. Okay, so each xi here each xi is bounded uh, the observing value from the bounded interval a to b. Okay, and uh, here a and b are finite number so that's where this condition we are putting it here a and b are finite real numbers that's where boundedness feature would come here okay so we will talk about uh, uh, probability probability of uh, uh, that uh, what is the probability that uh, uh, this uh, we can say that uh, what does it talk about uh, if anyone would like to say that uh, uh, do you know what is name of this one you can see that uh, we are talking about each xi we have uh, debated by the corresponding expectation so you can say that it is a centered random variable yi you can say that yi centered random variable yi afterward uh, what we do uh, we are defining divide this uh, we are summing all these centered random variable and after that we are dividing it by n so one kind of thing that uh, we do averaging or it is uh, later we will call it uh, it behave like uh, Asterized sample mean. Asterized sample mean simply we can say that uh, from that perspective. And if you are willing to find mean of this one, uh, if you are willing to find mean would be zero. Easy mean of this quantity, this uh, uh, under the summation, it would be zero. Okay. Easily you can find. So what is happening that uh, overall even sum of any two random variables. So, so it is talking about sum of yi. So sum of any random variable again happens to be a random variable. And after that we are dividing by n. So again uh, n is what it is uh, talking about count number of random variable. So it won't affect the randomness. So that's where it remain a random variable. We can simply say that. Okay. So what is happening that we try to find uh, right tail or left tail probability of this sum. Uh, we can denote it by uh, some a specific name call it x bar i it is somewhat like uh, what we better call it z i so it is having feature uh, similar to what we call it uh, uh, a standard normal random variable so that's why we will call it z i or z n better call it z n so it will have feature some similar to uh, z n so simply we say that we are having a random variable which is uh, generated by summation of centered random variable and, and averaging it out okay so zn if uh, we are willing to find definitely what would be the mean of zn it would be zero so we have to we don't need to focus on uh, 
what would be expectation non zero we don't have to focus on non zero expectation we have to focus on zero expectation due to this uh, construction of this uh, zn okay so we have to see that what is the right tail probability or what, what is the upper bound of left tail probability that we are willing to find so that uh, we can we can easily find it through hopping inequality it would be what it would be equal to um, exponential of uh, ratio of minus 2 times n uh, epsilon square divided by uh, b minus a whole square so in uh, you had already seen in uh, chernoff inequality it is very much implied from chernoff inequality so in chernoff inequality you might have already seen that what what does chernoff inequality say that it say that if you are having a centered random variable centered random variable if you are taking like this way and if you are willing to compute the probability of that centered random variable it would be uh, suppose this one is uh, greater than epsilon epsilon we can call it accuracy how much you want to go away from the uh, mean okay so uh, we know that this probability is bounded above by anyone would like to highlight what would be uh, situation here from chernoff inequality just recall chernoff inequality what does it say chernoff inequality anyone suppose uh, uh, x is a normal random variable then what would be upper bound anyone just uh, try to recall it in last class i had already covered it so what what thing it will come here what would be here anyone just uh, recall it what i am again asking you recall it what would be here what would be exponential bound not able to re recall it would be epsilon square by 2n 2 if you are square by 2 uh, simply uh, if you take summation uh, like uh, if you take from the perspective of summation uh, uh, if epsilon, epsilon square by 2 or if you are taking from the summation perspective like uh, just uh, i would like to the call same thing if you are taking summation of x i x i is are coming from normal distribution you can assume that expectation of i know uh, uh, when i am asking you should answer uh, try to answer that uh, whichever i have covered if you are unable to answer what does it mean that means you don't see any interesting feature over this course uh, it is not my problem it might be your problem later you will realize I always say that uh, try to understand things. If you don't want to understand what I can do, so it would be bounded above by exponential of in chain of inequality. We had already seen that in last class. It would be. epsilon square by twice of n twice of n it is coming something like that okay but what is happening that you just uh, play smartly here uh, uh, you want to introduce uh, here that time xi had uh, 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 what we do just uh, here if you try to generate it uh, it was for uh, a specific uh, random variable that we had already covered in Gaussian kind of thing. But if you want to go for a uh, general kind of things, so it would imply very simply like this way. So you have to smartly, if you are uh, trying to get bound of this one, then it would come like this way. Uh, probability that uh, summation, we are using this concept we will try to find chernob bound for this one so how we can find chernob bound right now we are finding chernob bound then we will go for hopping bond so hopping bond is directly uh, implied from chernob bond so we are taking summation i from 1 to n 
of O centered random variable x i minus expectation of x i and we don't need n this uh, uh, the left hand side of infinity we will bring it to right hand side then in that case also we do uh, asterization that means uh, we divide it by the sigma so, so that uh, how we do, do asterization uh, asterization process i had already discussed that uh, you can recall it from me there so you can uh, do asterization when asterization is possible then you divide both side by sigma that variance so in that case we will see that when n you will bring this n you will bring right hand side then n time epsilon and when you do a transition then you need to divide by sigma so that's why sigma will come in the denominator in the in this bound okay so this probability uh, right tail probability simply i i can call it right tail probability and it would be bounded above by exponential of okay exponential of easily we can say that when we had uh, in chern of inequality when we had t uh, simply or epsilon then we are having epsilon square by twice of n so that's in place of epsilon we are having n time epsilon by sigma square so that's why sim through simplification we will see it here what does it become so epsilon square would be here apart from that we will have n square and and denominator are already we are having n so n n square will cancel out one n and and in a denominator what we will have we will have twice of sigma so this situation we are getting so easily we can see that uh, from here you can deduce that when n is going approaching to infinity this bound it will approach to where it will approach to zero that uh, very small quantity simply i would like to say that this quantity is very small that i would like to say that very small this quantity happens to be very small and that generally we can denote it by delta happens to be so that it is totally implied from chernoff inequality i would like to say that this hobbing inequality implied from chernoff inequality just uh, we here don't we know the variance of the given random variable so that's why we are taking boundedness uh, criteria over the random variable that observed from a bounded random into given bounded interval so that's due to that in place of variance we are having this quantity okay only that is the difference so further if you uh, say that simply i would like to say that this uh, uh, exponential bound happens to be very small quantity very small quantity and uh, here it would be epsilon so if it is very a, a small quantity we can call it uh, this one is equal to delta this one is very a small as small as possible a small positive a small but positive like epsilon concept what we used to take so here we are taking the right hand side uh, exponential bound happens to be very small and that means equal to delta and if you simplify then we can express n in term of this accuracy epsilon accuracy n would be this ratio and from here also you can deduce that what would be the accuracy that means uh, how much uh, freedom you are having to go away from the mean what is the freedom to go away from the mean that what is the accuracy also you can say that what is the deviation from the mean so that also you can talk about so we can express that in term of this a square root of this ratio so easily we can get it uh, from this exponential bond what we are getting it so there is an uh, alternative restatement of hobbing inequality what does it say it says that if you are taking sample size and it happens to be sample size simply we can uh, talk about our size of the sample that n number of uh, random variable or n number of measurement we are taking observation we are taking so you can say that n is the size of the sample okay so suppose suppose if this sample size is just greater than or equal to this quantity this threshold quantity what which is in uh, which is in our hand okay then we can say that the with probability 1 minus delta this pro delta is very small so 1 minus delta would be big high probability so another way you can say that high probability 1 minus delta would be high probability with high probability the difference between empirical mean so this one is empirical mean we can call it empirical mean or this one is the true mean the difference if you simplify it then it will take the form of what form it will take it will take form this kind this difference it becomes 
just like 1 by n uh, summation of xi i varies from 1 to n minus Uh, expectation of x or xi so simply you can say that uh, x uh, is the random variable which is having unknown distribution we don't know the distribution of that also we do, uh, don't know the expectation as well so our intention is you have to estimate this one so before going to estimate this one we are talking about probability inductive from the perspective of this one so this is the difference okay so we are talking about uh, with uh, here uh, this uh, Hopping inequality, it is saying that uh, with uh, high probability, 1 minus delta, this difference is uh, at most epsilon. At most epsilon. With high probability, it would be at most epsilon. So that's where you can, geometrically, you can see it here. Uh, expectation of x, it, it would be somewhere here. It is the true mean, what we call it, but we don't know that. So here, with probability, 1 minus delta, uh, this uh, empirical you can call it uh, I would like to give a name of this one I can call it here uh, this one I am calling it uh, x bar generally this one is general notation of sample mean x bar xn so we can say that with high probability x bar n would be within epsilon epsilon either right or left uh, this one would be minus epsilon so x bar n is just meant for sample size how many observation you have taken in a sample okay so uh, sample size so x bar uh, with high probability x bar n it would be within epsilon distance of four true mean it would be because uh, we can it is empirical approach and this we can compute it from the sample we are having sample at hand we don't know the distribution so simply it is not possible to compute true mean but it is possible to compute sample mean it is so that's way with high probability through this half degree we are saying that with high probability the difference between true mean and uh, uh, empirical mean is at most epsilon that means it would be within this epsilon interval okay that it say opting infinity itself so if you are taking sample size just greater than or equal to this quantity then it will then you will achieve that quantity also sometimes you can say that uh, uh, this epsilon also you can say that margin of error and you will see that it is having direct this margin of error is having direct relation with uh, variance so that we will see in sub Gaussian cases. So I am taking another example of uh, optic inequality for sub Gaussian. So what does it Gaussian? We had already seen that uh, if you are having Gaussian, then easily we can find uh, moment genetic function of the Gaussian random variable. What would be? It would be uh, exponential of sigma square. Sigma square is the variance of uh, Gaussian random variable times s square divided by two square. Okay, this one is for Gaussian random variable. But if you are not taking a Gaussian random variable, we are taking a random variable whose uh, gen moment genetic function is bounded above by this one. So moment genetic function of uh, uh, any random variable which is having less than uh, value less than equal to this quantity, then we say that such kind of random variable happens to be sub Gaussian random variable. Sub Gaussian, it is trying to approach from behind. So that's why we are such a random variable we are calling it. Uh, sub Gaussian random variable and due to this bounded nature we say that sub Gaussian random variable uh, every bounded random variable uh, happens to be sub Gaussian with respect to some proxy uh, variance some proxy variance uh, one variance we had already seen that in last case uh, it was something like uh, uh, b square b minus a whole square by 8 something so proxy kind of variance it would have depends upon okay depends upon uh, the uh, range from which or uh, the domain from which uh, that random variable is observing the value okay so uh, this is the topic of uh, sub Gaussian uh, uh, random variable so suppose we are having a sample of size n x1 x2 up to xn uh, uh, happens to be uh, n number of uh, iid sub Gaussian random variables 
or sample size n simply we can we can say that we are trying to take sample it from sub gaussian random variable whose distribution is unknown to us but we know the proxy variance of that what is that that happens to be sigma square then we can find uh, probabilistic bound for uh, right tail probability what is the uh, right tail probability so right tail probability uh, would be bounded above by uh, exponential of negative uh, n times epsilon square divided by 2 times sigma square so you can say that this bound what we are getting here uh, in case of uh, Gaussian random variable this quantity would be equal to equality we will observe but here we observe less than we will observe in case of sub Gaussian so we are getting a bound so this bond is very much interesting than feasible to observe okay here so for sub Gaussian we are getting very systematic kind of bound and this uh, bound would be very very small so why because we want our sample mean should be very near to true mean or empirical mean should be very near to true, true mean that is our intention because sample might be generated from same data source okay same distribution so definitely uh, the, that that uh, distribution will have a true mean and uh, whatever sample we are getting that sample mean uh, corresponding sample mean would be very near to the true mean so that's why this uh, bound it would be very small bound this would be very small simply we are saying that it is delta delta bound the delta is very small positive real number simply i would like to say that okay so now uh, we can further explain this one what does it say that so here we say that it is very small quantity quantity and that one is equal to delta then if you simplify it then we will express uh, uh, sample size that sample size how much sample uh, how many observation you want to take what many member would be there in the sample so suppose that n we are calling it and n can be expressed uh, in the, as a ratio of this one so it, it is a function of sigma square it is function of uh, that accuracy how much you want to uh, what would be deviation around uh, so what we call it mean true mean what would be deviation around how much deviation you want so that uh, epsilon is coming here and delta is coming that how much a small pro probability you want so, so all these quantity in together is giving a resulting value of sample size okay also if you suppose the sample size is known to us then you want how much deviation is possible uh, around the sample mean then uh, so around the true mean then that also you can find that if you know sample size if you know variance if you know uh, this much of a small probability it would be away from the epsilon away from the true mean then what would be the epsilon epsilon we can get it like this way and further if you simplify it sigma square is coming under a square root it can come out so we can say that epsilon is the margin of error so it's, it is sigma variance time ascended division times this quantity it is very much essential you need to know it is purely depends upon your choice how you can come up with so that means uh, here you are here this is the true mean but you don't know the distribution so it is not is possible to compute true mean so what you do uh, you, either you uh, come up with a sample size if you are having a sample size then you can uh, come up with an epsilon interval or in epsilon neighborhood of uh, uh, true mean where you can claim that your sample mean would fall sample mean would fall so that so so with what probability with uh, one minus, uh, with high probability that high probability is what one minus delta and with uh, uh, very less probability a small probability it would be epsilon away from uh, true mean epsilon away okay that means uh, uh, right tail or left tail probability we are talking about what is the right tail or left tail probability so this, this quantity here here we talk about x greater than uh, or x minus epsilon or simply you can say that uh, better i i would like to call it z z greater than epsilon that one is talking about right tail probability the right tail probability is very small also likewise also you can say that left tail probability is also very small this quantity so that so that, that what is that probability so that probability can be at most uh, delta very small probability delta so that generally we are calling also confidence level as well so in hypothesis testing we will call it confidence level otherwise also we will call it rejection region as well there are various names as per uh, uh, what concept you want to introduce there are various names okay so simply in together you can say that uh, this epsilon uh, uh, you can call it it is margin of error so you can uh, this margin of error is allowed to uh, that sample mean allow to sample mean because the sample mean it is not uh, uh, 
representing complete population it is just uh, one sample so that's where uh, mar this margin of error is allowed so here uh, how we can say that further this is how we can restate the same uh, hopping uh, in uh, hopping lemma uh, hopping bound for uh, this sub gaussian we can represent we can say that if you are having a sample size uh, which is just greater than or equal to this thresholding value all these are at our hand we we can come up with all these okay because we know we are talking about uh, a specific sub gaussian so we know sigma square we know delta what a small probability would be that delta also it is our choice uh, what accuracy we want that uh, that margin of error we want that would be also our choice so that's where we can come up with a thresholding value of uh, sample size then we can say that with high probability the sample mean the difference between sample mean and true mean it would be at most this epsilon this would be uh, the margin of error at most it would be epsilon and this epsilon is given by this one okay so this one is talking about uh hopping infinity okay now we will go to discuss about uh stochastic convergence till now any question anyone is having any question you can ask no question okay fine if you don't have any question then it's fine it may possible that either you don't understand or you don't want to understand if you don't have any question i try to explain everything here you should have some question if you are really willing to understand okay so here we are coming to discuss about a stochastic convergence of sequence of random variable so it is not like that in regarding convergence of sequence of real number we had all this in that it is talking about uh, for given epsilon there exists delta or there exists a natural number n we simply call it n or n not you can call it natural number n not such that uh, eventually every terms of the sequence falls in epsilon neighborhood of a and a happens to be limit of this sequence so this convergence criteria we had already discussed for all uh, n greater than equal to n not so this convergence criteria you might have already seen in uh, math one you might have already seen so this one is a convergence criteria so for given epsilon you can say that for given epsilon and same all these criteria what i discussed in short you can represent it in a single thing limit that n tends to, when n is approaching to infinity the sequence a an is approaching to a you can so you can represent all these quantity uh, in this in this form and this one is uh, very uh, what we call it uh, very simple representation but if you want to see analytic behavior geometrical behavior it is directly coming from here this uh, analytic behavior coming from epsilon and definition so that is the definition of a limit of a sequence or convergence of a uh, sequence so that we had all you might have already seen in math one okay so we are talking about here a stochastic convergence of a sequence of a random variable what does it talk about so suppose we are having sequence of random variable so there are various notion of, notion of uh, convergence of uh, sequence of random variable so one of that uh, first one is uh, almost surely convergent to x so we are having a sequence of random variable x1 x2 up to xn okay and we will talk about uh, where does it converge it converges to a random variable so how it converges so suppose it converges in almost sure way what how almost sure way it is defined almost sure way we can say that it is defined like this way almost sure ways to x so how it is defined it is defined like this way probability that uh, limit of x n is equal to x is 1 equivalently we can say that probability that limit of x n that sequence of random variables is not equal to x is 0 so both are equivalent either you go with this or this sometimes if you proceed with this one it would be relatively easier uh, in comparison to this result so both uh, both are equivalent definition so this is definition of uh, stochastic convergence of sequence of random variable in almost surely way to a random variable x okay there is another convergence criteria for sequence of random variable that it talk about convergence in probability so suppose we are having a sequence of random variable x n and we will say that it is converging to x 
notation is like this way uh, xn is converging to x in probability how huh? if for any given epsilon greater than 0 probability limiting value of the probability that it is within epsilon neighborhood of x is what is the limiting value of probability that within epsilon neighborhood of x if it is equal to 1 then we say that this sequence is convergent in probability to x and equivalent definition of this one is saying that uh, uh, limiting value of the probability that uh, xn is epsilon away from x is 0 limiting value of the probability of that xn is epsilon away from random variable x is 0 so this one is talking about convergence in probability we, this one is convergence in probability so either you go with this definition or this definition both are equivalent to each other so this one is saying that it's very small probability if you just uh, come up in term of n or probabilistic infinity it would be very small probability and this one is the probability almost uh, equal to one simply you can say the very near to one or one minus high probability simply we can say that this one is high probability this one is there is a high probability that action is within its silent distance of x or there is a very small probability very small very very small probability that x n is epsilon away from x right tail or left tail what you talked about okay so same uh, it is directly derived from uh, that uh, probabilistic inequality what we discussed so all this if you uh, talk about uh, all these convergence you need to uh, apply probabilistic uh, inequalities so there is third kind of a stochastic convergence of sequence of random variable that one is talking about convergence in distribution so what is happening that we directly no, won't talk about uh, random variable we will talk about distribution that the cumulative distribution function we'll talk about so a random variable x sequence of random variable x and it will converge in distribution to a random variable x if the if you are taking sequence of uh, if we are having sequence of random variable then with respect that we will get sequence of distribution of random variable xn f of xn okay this one is sequence of random variable for if uh, it will define point wise with respect to x so if sequence of random distribution cumulative distribution function it is converging to distribution function of x then we say that uh, uh, xn is converging to x in distribution so this one this one is having very practical uh, example in case of central limit theorem uh, we will see it here so this one is finding application in law of large numbers so that's why i am discussing all these conversions okay so here i will take uh, one example one or two example if time permit i will take uh, one example here example on convergence in distribution so it is very simple to come up with various example of convergence on uh, in distribution so suppose we are in, having sequence of random variable uh, it is uh, defined in sense that uh, these are uh, identically distributed that means all these uh, uh, member of sequence having uh, sequence of random variable having the same distribution function f of x then easily we can claim that f of x it is the cumulative distribution function of a random variable x okay and these member are having the same distribution so easily we can say that this sequence is converges in distribution to x it is very simple why from the uh, construction of this sequence we know that uh, f of xn is equal to f of x for every x so easily it will imply that if you apply limiting criteria both sides easily we can say that limit of this uh, sequential uh, distribution function or cumulative distribution function it is equal to f of x that means distribution, distribution function of x so easily we can say that uh, this sequence is uh, convergent in uh, distribution to x so very simple it is very much abstract kind of example we will go to talk about practical example so here we take a sequence of random variable what kind of random variable we are taking sequence of uh, exponential random variable we are taking sequence of exponential random variable in uh, and we will see that this sequence of exponential random variable it will converge to a exponential random variable with parameter one a sequence of exponential random variable uh, what does uh, it say that means distribution of this one it would be in term of exponential it would have exponential distribution so distribution is defined so community if dis we know that uh, if you know the distribution of a or density of a uh, exponential random variable it is the power minus lambda okay so suppose this one is the density then it sim simply implies that what would be uh, what would be density uh, community distribution function it would be uh, 1 minus 
lambda times x this is the concept it is coming like this way something like this it is coming okay one minus uh, it is coming something like that so due to that uh, we can simply say that uh, uh, distribution function of uh, uh, this uh, this member of uh, sequence it is having uh, like this way it is defined like this easily we can find it because these are having uh, something like exponential distribution with uh, parameter n simply we can say the parameter n so this is the distribution function of uh, these uh, member of sequence of random variable now we talk about uh, convergence of this uh, cumulative distribution function so if you take uh, here it is we can say that this cumulative distribution function of x and it is defined for only positive uh, value of x or positive observation it is for uh, zero or non negative it is zero simply so you have don't have to focus for a non positive value observation of x okay so just we try to take limiting value of f of x n so if you are finding limiting value of this one just take limit uh, so here it is having two component one is this one another one is this one here n is involved this one we it is constant so limit of this one would be equal to one there is no any issue just focus we have to focus on here so if you are willing to find limit of this one it is what it is just talking about uh, it would be it is one kind of definition of exponential function we can say that so uh, limiting value of f of x n it is what one minus it to the power minus x and what does it talk about it is your actually uh, it is the uh, probability of that a random exponential random variable with exponent 1 when it is uh, greater than one quantity or we can say that uh, okay so it is simply uh, uh, one minus uh, it, it is one kind of what we say that uh, up to x we can say that it is random variable is observing value up to x One minus it to the power minus x. So here, what is lambda? Lambda equal to one. Lambda equal to one. So if you are having a exponential distribution function with a parameter lambda equal to one, and if you are willing to find a cumulative distribution function, it would be equal to one minus it to the power minus x. One minus. So simply uh, the limiting value of the f of x n it is what it is equal to f of x it is equal to f of x that happens to be a community distribution function of a random variable exponential random variable with parameter one so that's why here this sequence is converging with this uh, distribution is converging to x in distribution